Well, basically, I'm doing this because uh, my daughter can come with me to my cheese. She's in New Zealand and she's, you know, with me for a few weeks. Um, I don't know how many of you have been in this situation before, but there are time, there are, there are these situations where you're living somewhere and there are bad people that live there and mean people that live there and they hang around in groups and they just sort of wait to find somebody to beat up. And uh, I grew up in a town like that. It was a small town, so we knew who they were. We just be very careful that she didn't, you know, make one of them angry. And, uh, you know, and it, it was never like a one-on-one -on -one thing. And it was a very much of a racial thing. But guaranteed, if they targeted you, uh, they would cream you, you know. <laughs> so, when I decided to go to Hawaii, uh, one of the first things that people told me was that you know you don't want to go there because they got those big Hawaiian guys and they don't like white people and they're gonna they're gonna attack you and they're gonna they're gonna beat the crap out of you. So I thought I was gonna be okay because I had experience with people like this and I had a sense of how to avoid this kind of trouble. There are three rules that you need to remember. Number one. <clears throat> Don't go into their territory territory without an escort. And that escort has to live where they live. Number two, don't look at anybody. Use your peripheral vision, use your hearing, never look at anybody directly. And three, and most important, never give anybody the finger, ever. <laughs> because you might think that you're giving the finger to some little hippie kid or some accountant, but standing behind them is a 300 pound Hawaiian guy who thinks that you're giving him the finger and that's it for you. So I was pretty you know, fine, you know, I mean, I, I was living there for quite a while and uh, I didn't have too many problems. But I had a, a best friend, I developed a friendship with a guy named Gus and we became very close, like brothers, and we had a, a business together. And Gus was from Pittsburgh, he was from the suburbs, so he didn't have any experience with people like this. And he had a chip on his shoulder. Because when he was uh, a college student at Ohio University, uh, somebody intimidated him and humiliated him in front of his girlfriend, and he uh, just took it and stewed over it, I think, every day after that. So he studied Kung Fu, you know, he was ready. Now, having a friend like that is kind of dangerous because he is not as careful as I was. Well, uh, Gus and I had this business. It was a uh, grounds maintenance business. And we were working uh, in uh, this area called Kailua. Uh, which is um, middle class to rich class. Very nice place in Hawaii. And we took care of a uh, townhouse complex. And we were going there every day. We knew the area well. And we had a guy that worked with us. Uh, his name was Buzz, and he worked in the area. Now, you would just never expect to run into any people like that there. Um, it, was, it was a really nice area, close to the beach, um, you know, upscale. And one day, uh, we were leaving, uh, we, we, I pulled out of the complex, and I was driving, which was a very unusual thing because I never drove, but I think Gus, maybe he was feeling ill or something, and I pull out from the townhouse complex, the two-lane road, and uh, suddenly this black car comes in front of me and stops. Now. Everything is happening very fast, and I'm processing it very slow. Uh, one reason was I had just gotten out of the hospital about a week before that, and I had a, a, a gland taken out of my throat. So I had stitches, and I wasn't feeling that good either. So the thing stops, and I think, okay, they must have broken down. And then the next thing I'm thinking about is why are they all getting out of the car? 
And the next thing I think of it is, why are they taking that golf club out of the trunk? Because they don't look like golfers to me. <laughs> and the next thing I'm thinking about, how many of these guys just got out of prison? And then the next thing I'm thinking about, oh shit, they're coming after us. So Gus said, go. Go where? There's a stoplight in front of that car, and I'm not going to get into a chase thing with these guys. And the road lead the, the, the road leads to basically a dead end. So I I just didn't think about that. And they're coming after us. Now we're in the we're in a small truck, a, a, a Datsun you know truck with a small area, and they're shouting something about you gave me the finger, you gave me the finger, and uh, they said get out of the car, get out of the truck, and there was no way I was going to get out of that truck. <laughs> If I got out of the truck, they were going to probably kill me. But if I stayed in the truck, they still might kill me. And I was trapped. Now, uh, one guy came on my side and started throwing punches uh, at me through the window. And the other three guys came on Gus's side and started hitting him in the face. Now, uh, he was not going to back down. He stuck his head through the window and let them punch him in the face. <laughs> The guy that was hitting me, I, I didn't know what to say, because I didn't know why they were doing this. I just said to him, I said, listen, if you hit me, you're really going to hurt me, because I just got out of the hospital. And he looked at me, and he, he, and he heard me. And he ran out to the other side of the car, and he started punching Gus. <laughs> so... All of them were over on the other side of the car now. And I, I, I just don't know what we're going to do because I know this is not going to end, you know, a, a, a good ending is not going to happen. Then suddenly the guy that works with us, Buzz, comes up in his, in his Volkswagen and, and, and parks on the side of the road, stops on the side of the road and says, Hey, the cops are coming, the cops are coming. They all run back in their car and drive away. <laughs> so... I, uh, we decided, I decided, let's go to Buzz's house because uh, those guys are going to be looking for us. And um, I said, because I said, what? Why'd they do that? He said, I gave them the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's wrong with you? He said, well, they gave me the finger. <laughs> so, then it's a short story at the end of the story, but the moral, I think, is that it doesn't matter if the cops come or not. It's just that the bad guys believe that the cops are coming and you're going to be okay. Thank you. Hey.